Welcome to Miniatures, me and the Great Outdoors. We're here today to make some dungeon tiles. Uh, very easy with some XPS foam, just some uh, half inch here, nothing too special or fancy. I, I got it at the Home Depot, I think it was about $10 for a big sheet of it. And um, I was very intrigued by Jeremy's from Black Magic Crafts. Uh, tiles, very easy to do, good start. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead, show you how simple and easy it is to do. I measured a three by three tile here, three inches by three inches, nothing fancy. As you can see, it's a little jagged, nothing to worry about. You don't have to be too crazy here. Um, uh, as it's a starter thing, uh, all I used was an exact knife, not a very good one at that. And uh, yeah, that's why it's a little bit jagged here. But with the stone look that we're going to achieve, it's gonna look pretty awesome. Let's get to it. First things first, we're just gonna measure our marks. Move it down. Okay. Now this is crooked in any way. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much. Well, this is a dungeon. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Because the stones wouldn't be perfect, would they? These two lines done. Yes. Uh, as you can see, I'm quite terrible at measuring. <laughs> no need to be exact a little bit off will give it a little bit of authenticity in my opinion i've already done quite a few of these uh, as you can hear from his vid i basically did the same amount as he did a couple of 12 by 12s a few six by sixes uh about 16 three by threes just to be prepared for the future of any uh big giant campaigns we're about to do i just hope to use this for my first one ever i think it would be excellent so now, like he said, we're gonna follow the lines down here. This way, when you see the tiles finish beside themselves, they won't look so bad. Now, this is about 3.34 in the morning I'm doing this. Quite funnily, because I already had done this video. But it did not wanna work because I'm loading these on my iPhone. And I think today is gonna to be the last time I use my iPhone. Now, we're just going to go over those lines. Honey. Really about that much tip of your uh, of your scalpel. Nothing crazy, right? Not going too deep. Just like that. And just drag it lightly across the indentation of the pen line. Now, I have it sometimes ripped like that. I go with it. I think it looks awesome. You'll find that when you do the washes after you paint everything, it just looks like broken stone. It actually looks pretty awesome. I'm really a big fan. And bloop. Now, let's be in the way. Let's rip that off. Again, broken stone. Let's peel at it like that. Look, pick at it. Looks awesome. Looks awesome. Okay. Now that we've done that, we're gonna go back with our pen and just go over those holes the line indentations we made. Man, you got a three by three tile. It's very easy, it's gonna take a wash, no problem. Uh, you're gonna find uh, the Midwinter Mini Swash that I have created uh, following uh, his recipe. Wicked, wicked recipe. Uh, you'll see that later in the video. Uh, this is the fun part though, some cracks. And then what you can do is you just kind of make your indents harder, right? For your cracks. And then when you paint and fill the wash, you'll see that it goes, it just flows in there beautifully. And that's that. We got a wonderful, wonderful little tile ready to go. Okay, on to the next. Okay, now we have set up some Black Magic Craft style. Uh, just some matte black paint, some matte Mod Podge mixed up in there. I like gray is fine for me. Holds her down. And I've actually been meaning to do this for years. So yeah, just get it nice. Don't leave like globs like that, you know? You want to, even if it's thin, it'll dry okay. You just want to get coverage. If you feel it's too thin afterwards, just give it another coat. So it's nice to finally get these tiles done and actually have some uh, Something good for D&D, &D, for the kids. 
and uh, for my wife, so she can see something visual. And what I like to do if I if I create any bubbles from going like this, you'll see what will happen is it'll build up on the corners here on the lines that you're pushing down against. Trim those out. Get that out of there. That way it'll fill it in still, but at the same time I won't leave like huge globs because it just kind of looks like shit. So this is my beginning stuff. That's why I'm sharing it with y'all because you definitely deserve to see how someone does it. And who has no experience in this at all? Because look, oh, <laughs> see, that'll happen to you. Rebrush it. <laughs> Looking today on Some City Radio again on the group Facebook chat. And, oh, some of the inspiration on there. These guys are insane. I can't wait to learn to kit that. One thing I'm learning as a terrain builder and kitbasher, all that stuff, is that you got to really pick and choose what you want to do you only have so much time in a day to do everything right and i think i'm gonna start showing my face in these videos because it's kind of weird to do it this way and uh i like how all the guys do their you actually see who they are a little bit of a personality see the face behind the monster <laughs> well, uh, i'm not sure i think it says how long is it on here to dry four it says cure time four weeks that's a long time <laughs> so we're looking at 20 to 30 minutes for the sealer. Now, since these are D&D tiles and my first ones, I'm not too worried about what's going to happen because uh, I know they're probably going to go through some roughage. And what will be good that since this beginning of the channel, you'll uh, see these over time. You'll be seeing these in games, and I look forward to uh, showing you all this stuff. So thank you for watching. Uh, I will be back. And so here's one of the Mod Podgers all done. Just covered in that black magic crap mix, uh, dark black and uh, my patch. Might cover on the side so we'll see how we cover that up. So we just get some of this medium gray that I showed you. A lot of I was speaking of in the pictures, the medium gray here. We'll take this medium gray, just kind of wet dry brush it with this makeup brush right in there, okay? Get it all those cracks. Looking good, looking good. All right, spin around here. A little bit hard to work. No touching it, but again, don't worry about it. These are rough tiles. We're not trying to make crazy, super high-end gaming tabletop quality. We're making emotional stuff. <laughs> through our heart and emotion, will our beauty shine through. <laughs> That's uh, so what happens when you do your late night bits. I can do man. It's actually looking pretty decent. Decent. Okay. Okay. And then I'm just gonna put that and let that sit on some uh, on some Reynolds wrap, uh, bacon paper, non-wax paper and let it dry, come back with the next color and do a lighter dry brush on it. And uh, yeah, doing good, just coming along. We have our nice uh, finished block here. Uh, we have that, uh, what was the medium here? Let me see here, it was the medium gray. So the next we're gonna put on a steel gray, the lighter gray to just kind of dry brush your hair. I'm gonna use one of these brushes, see how it works. And we're just gonna try and highlight a bit and it doesn't matter how bright it is because of the uh, wash that I'm gonna put on, which I have made, the Midwinter's Mini Wash recipe. Give it a big shake. Now I think I added in a little bit extra. Like he said, do it to your own taste. I haven't even tested on minis yet, but I have all the faith in the world that it is gonna work on this beautiful piece of terrain that we're gonna work with. Okay, let's see what we can do with it. Oh, goodness, yes. Now you could do this, like Jeremy said, in Black Magic Craft, to your heart's content. Some people will go over to a bunch and really highlight it up. 
Now the wash is going to dim it down. I'm not too worried about that. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. Hairs clip off, just pull them off. <laughs> Boy, am I looking forward to playing on these things. <laughs> that looks great. Super easy too. In fact, it'll probably be quick enough to dry that I'll be able to throw the wash on. Uh, yeah, look, see, there's that stain there. Looks totally fine. Especially if the wash will be in there like nothing. Alrighty, now that we have these all grayed up, take a different block here, got a bunch of them here all prepped. All right, very simple to brush through these as you can tell. So what we're gonna do now, custom midwinter's mi minis wash. Excuse me, if you don't know how to do this, if you don't know how to do the midwinter's mini wash, uh, just go check this video. It was a perfect video and uh, I'm telling you, I do not want to be spending, especially I can only imagine now, the prices bottles of this don't use bottles of this on your nice like custom made terrain okay yeah it's nice and that's awesome and even if it's crazy beautiful i just when you're starting out this is my first stuff i've ever made i would not waste a ten dollar bottle of normal imagine how much i would need <laughs> it's crazy and this 20 bucks tops if that dip around and just give her treat it like a wash you want it to be like your null oils or your egg racks right I, and I did get the uh, the Dollar Rowney. Uh, I just got black and burnt umber. So I watch a lot of Vince Venturella. I haven't in a bit, but he uh, he explained if you're going to have any inks to start to make these washes, those are the ideal ones. I'm usually really bad at washes on my minis because I'm kind of slow because I'm <laughs> trying to be so meticulous. And I'm learning better to, as you can see here, be a lot quicker with it. You can see, see it flows perfect. Very nice. I think I put in one extra water and one, um, maybe one or two drops of dish soap. That seems okay. Oh, see this part here? So, I'm like, oh no, I'm running out of time. You're not running out of time. Just go like that. Take a big dip. Boop, boop, boop. Right in there. Right in there. All right. There she goes. There she goes. <laughs> okay. And that's it. I had one drying a couple minutes ago. Let's see what it looks like. That was the one I did from earlier. Let's see, it's, all those highlights are just kind of blending in nice. Let's do one more. My poor little one, he's in his bedroom. Because he's like, Daddy, are you going to do your video today? And I said, yes, son. This is the last one. You don't have to worry about <laughs> coming out. I'd like to do some videos with him. He did my little ones into the Goliaths for Necromunda. So now you're going to start the, that group first. I have such a backlog of painting, but... I'm very addicted to kit bashing and building. A lot of my D&D stuff, I actually love GW and Age of Sigmar stuff. I'm not a big, I don't play the big games. I only play the skirmish ones or learning to. So I'll be basically using all my Age of Sigmar for this stuff. Nice, cool D&D games. And I have a million ideas to do with that stuff. There's so many good characters for D&D for posting it. There we go. Presto change you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put that down to dry. Jeremy, I wanna thank you again, buddy. Well, like you see my info, the reason I made this channel is to meet people. The people that inspired me and helped me get through some tough times mentally. It's no different for me than fly fishing, hunting, uh, and just meeting all these good people. I'm not used to the people that I hang with, the, the new people that I've been around with in the past few years of my life. And it's it's been a wondrous change of interaction with people and uh miniatures and painting and wargaming i haven't even started to play these games yet and already i they're just wonderful people anywhere i go doesn't matter what store everyone's been great